Check out FlipsideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10 and support the channel at the same time. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and the Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. We just had a big week of previews of Battle Bond, and as you can imagine, they are impacting the market, especially for Commander cards. We're going to talk a lot about that today. We're going to look at Standard as we start to move towards the big Pro Tour Dominaria coming next weekend. Standard is not necessarily going crazy right now, but next weekend, expect some big changes. We are seeing some indicators, though, of what could be in store for next weekend. Aside from that, we're going to look at the Vintage Buyout, see what's going on there. But quickly, before we get started, just a really fast reminder, if you check out the description below, you'll find a few ways to help support what we do here at the channel. One of which is our Patreon page. You'll find that linked below. You're also going to find links to products on Amazon. If you make any purchases on Amazon, actually no matter what it is, once you go through that link, we'll get a small percentage. Finally, Flipside Gaming still offering a promo code for our viewers. They actually have some exclusive Richard Kane Ferguson playmats. If you're a fan of the old school legends, you may want to check those out. As always, thank you not only to the folks that look at those links, but to all the viewers. You all make the channel what it is. Let's get into it. We begin with the top five standard legal cards that have lost value this week. Coming in at number five, Karn Scion of Urza. Down $1.10 this week to $64.97. So this card is trending down. That's not too surprising considering the very high price point. And more packs are getting open, so players that want Karn are starting to get their hands on them. That's good news. Now, the bad news is next weekend is Pro Tour weekend. No doubt this card is going to be highlighted very, very intensely. And it will be in the top eight, probably all over the top eight, as a matter of fact. This card will have a surge next week. I wouldn't be surprised to see this get up to maybe $75, $80 before it stabilizes back down again. So watch out for this one next week. Like I said, it's all over standard. Maybe something else, though, that's very interesting about this card that you'd want to watch is the fact that it is seeing Modern and Legacy play, too. Modern Affinity and sometimes Eldrazi Tron decks, Legacy Mono Red Prison, Eldrazi Stompy, Steel Stompy, so... It's already found a pretty good foothold outside of Standard even, so there's a lot of crossover appeal for this card. This will probably eventually stabilize closer to the $50 mark over time, over the course of the summer as more packs get open. But for right now, I think we're in for a wild ride with Karn. Number four, Gideon of the Trials, down $1.68 to $19.99. This card has been super hot recently and has been aggressively spiking, so that's why you're seeing a little snapback now. Still very popular in standard control decks, white-black vehicles decks, and modern you'll find this in control decks still. So with Gideon performing this well going into Pro Tour weekend, I would expect that this card could also surge next week. Number three, Mox Amber. This one is not doing as hot, down $1.81 to $16.39. Now, people haven't really figured out what to do with this card yet. I've seen some paradoxical outcome decks floating around Magic Online and Standard. I have seen some modern, white, aggressive, or Boros aggressive decks, but nothing's really caught on. Until it does, this card is going to continue to drop. It might actually get pretty low. Number two, the Scarab God, down $2 to $20.27. Of course, this has been the darling of many metas in the past. Not as popular anymore. Is the card gone from standard, though? Of course not. There are still decks that run this. Grixis Energy still hanging around here and there. You'll find some mid-range decks and some control decks will run this from time to time. It's just not seeing the amount of play that it used to see, and it's not putting up the results it used to put up in this current meta anyway. Could it have a good week of the Pro Tour? Who knows, maybe if a deck running this happens to top 8 or be in the top 2 or something, then this card could stabilize, maybe even jump next week. But for the most part, I think we're seeing the slow decline of this card as it moves towards this Falls rotation. The biggest issue with the Scarab God is outside of Standard, it doesn't see a whole lot of play. It's not really doing much in Modern, Legacy, Vintage. Commander, though, it is a good Commander card, so it will always have some value there. Number one, Lyra Dawnbringer, down $368 to $26. Lyra's actually still performing well, even though it's losing a lot of value. The first couple weeks of the meta, this card was hot. It was everywhere in large quantities. It's come down a little bit as the meta has progressed. But it's still seeing play in standard control decks, white black vehicles decks, the Azorius gift decks, and even modern control. Sometimes you'll see this like a one of in sideboards, so people are at least trying it out there. That's a good sign for its future potential. But at least for right now, I do think, again, with the exception of next weekend, where it will probably stabilize or go up again, 
I do think this will come down, maybe settling closer to $20 a summer. All right, let's move on to the top five standard legal cards that have gained the value this week. Number five, Mirage Mirror, up 38 cents to 289. So we know this is a decent commander card, but why is it going up this week? Well, Strictly Better MTG did a really cool budget deck tech, which was a Power Stone Shard deck running three copies of these. And he featured it on his YouTube channel, which was also linked to an article on TCG Player. So that got a lot of eyes on that deck and on this card this week. Number four, Treasure Map of 44 cents to $5. This has been in a lot of standard decks, most consistently though, recently in the Mono Red Aggro decks, and it's been looking pretty good there. Number three, Shafet Dunes of 49 cents to $1.94. Another card that's seeing a lot of standard play recently in White Black Vehicles decks. Also, Modern Death and Taxes decks are running this. Number two, Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, of 61 cents to $39.97. So Teferi's not necessarily in a whole bunch of different decks, but he's in a very good deck, and that is the current standard Azorius control builds. As a matter of fact, they continue to look really strong, even going into the previous weekend. I have no doubt those decks will look great at the Pro Tour. We'll probably see more than one copy in the top eight, and Teferi is going to have a really big week next weekend. But for right now, he does go up at least a little bit. Also, this card is seeing play in modern control builds, too. So that's something to think about for the future. Number one, Sorcerer Spyglass. Up 350 this week to 483. Another indication that a lot of people are jumping on the control bandwagon now. That does appear to be a deck that is due to have a big pro tour. This card will also probably have a really big week next week. Now, it is in these control decks and standard, among some other builds, but also Legacy, Mono Red Prison, Eldrazi Stompy, and Vintage, Ravenger Shops is running this. So this is another card that's seeing exposure outside of standard. All right, let's move on to the top five modern legal cards that have lost value this week. Now, you're going to see in this list and the next one that modern is pretty slow right now, and people have kind of moved past a lot of the excitement that was going on when the meta was shifting and things are settling in, people are getting the cards they want, and as a matter of fact, a lot of the cards moving, especially on our next list, are due to commander play more so than modern play. So let's see what we got here. Number five, Engineered Explosives from Modern Master. It's down 257 to 78.95. Real quick, I want to call out to just missing our list, which would have been number six, was Doubling Season, the Modern Masters version. So those Doubling Seasons are starting to get soft now that we know that it is being reprinted in Battle Bond as a Mythic, so I'm sure that will probably make our list next week, but just wanted to call that out. As for Engineered Explosives, we have been seeing the original version going down a little bit week to week, and now this one is starting to follow suit too. This card just got really hot recently over the last few months, has been spiking aggressively, so it was due for some normalization, and that's what you see here. It continues to see play in sideboards, usually one of, sometimes two ofs in multiple decks. Number four, Dark Confidant from Modern Masters as well. Down 303 to $80.57. We've been talking a lot about Bob the last few weeks and why he's been losing value. I do think he continues to go down couple things you need to know. Jund, of course, has been a little bit soft, not performing as well as some would have liked to have seen it perform. Now, with that being said, Jund has looked better the last couple weeks and has been putting up better results. So all it needs to do is win one big tournament, and this could all change. But right now, it's still a little bit soft. This continues to lose value. Also, the other key deck that this was a part of, the Humans deck, is running less and less of this. The more successful versions of this deck running one or zero copies now of Dark Confidant. That hurts a lot. Now, the card is never going to completely bottom out because it sees a lot of fantastic play in Legacy right now, a little bit of vintage play too. And as a matter of fact, you even have things like Golgari Midrange decks that have had success with this not too long ago in Modern. So it goes down more. Maybe it settles in closer to the $60, $65 mark again, unless something changes. Number three is Maronar, down $3.95 to $26. Okay, here's one of those cards that's moving due to Commander and not because of Modern. Of course, this started to jump when Rat Colony was revealed from Dominaria. And a lot of players went out there and tried to build that Rat deck. And this, of course, was their Commander of Choice in many cases. So this card got hot, now we're seeing some snapback and normalization. I do think this will continue to come down some more. Number two, Mox Opal from Scars of Meriden, down 499 to 10450. This is another card that's been extremely hot recently. It's just stabilizing a little bit, trying to find its price point. This thing is all over the place, though. 
It's looked great in a lot of vintage decks in the past. In Legacy, of course, most recently, the Steel Stompy deck running this. Modern all over the place in Ironworks Combo, Lantern Control, Affinity, and many, many other decks at this point. This needs a reprint desperately. It's just a hard card to find, and of course, until more copies get out there for players, I don't expect this price point to go down very much more. As a matter of fact, it will probably continue to climb up. Number one, Tarmogoy from Future Sight down 512 to 1 of 448. So this is going down a little bit due to the softness of Jund, and also since the meta shifted, Traverse Death Shadow hasn't been as popular as it once was. Again, this is still seeing modern play, though, sometimes in Golgari midrange, among other decks. It sees a lot of solid legacy play, too, so don't expect this card to drop a whole lot more, but I would expect it to go down maybe a little bit. Now, this, of course, is the most expensive version of the card, being the original with this unique card frame, this unique art. It is highly sought after among players, so that's not going to change. Even if this does go down a little more, I don't see it getting much below $100. All right, so let's move on to the top five modern legal cards that have gained value this week. Coming in at number five is Life and Limb, up 269 to 879. And this is one of those examples of a card that's moving again because of Commander and not because of Modern. Sapperling decks, popular right now thanks to the cards added with Dominaria. Number four, Hall of the Bandit Lord, up 274 to 1813. So you might look at this and say, okay, another Commander card made the list. However... This is not moving due to Commander as much as it's moving due to Modern. There is a Turbo Vizier deck out there that's making the rounds, and we might have just found our hot deck of the month for June. Now, if you go to TCG Player, there's an article in Deck Tech by Raphael Levy there, and the deck actually looks pretty sweet. Basically, it runs Vizier of Remedies and Devoted Druid for Endless Mana, and then it takes that mana, dumps it into Walking Ballista for the win. This is a key part of that build. Number three is Thrumming Stone, up 332 this week to $20.99. This card was hot for a little bit. Last week it went down, bounces back this week, but again, this is moving due to Commander because of the Rat Colony deck. Seems like whenever we get a card that lets you break the rule of maximum of four, or in Commander's case, one, Thrumming Stone goes up for a while, then it usually goes back down. Number two, Leyline of the Void. This is the Guild Pack version, up 349 this week to $34. This has been a very, very consistent sideboard card in Modern. As a matter of fact, Hollow One is a popular deck that runs this. Recently, I've been seeing more Mardu Pyromancer decks running this out of the board, and I think with that additional exposure, it's pushing the card a little this week. Number one, Clark's Thumb, up $8.01 to $9.99. You might be looking at this and saying, what is this all about? Well, of course, it is because of Commander. Specifically, Due to the fact that we saw a couple cards previewed last week from Battlebond that are going to encourage you to get involved in some coin flipping shenanigans. And those cards are Zender Split, Eye of Wisdom, and a Cone Eye of Chaos. Now these are partner with legendary creatures, which means jointly they can be your commander for an Iza build. It's got a lot of people thinking about cards that will complement these abilities. Of course, Krark's Thumb is one of them. We are also going to see two other cards at the end of our video in our Commander Spotlight that are spiking due to this preview. All right, let's move on to our Vintage Spotlight. And yes, buyouts are continuing, although they are slowing down a little bit. Maybe we're past your peak. That would be good. Now, we're going to do what we did the other weeks. We're going to look at 10 cards. First, I'm going to show you what it says they did according to MTG Goldfish. Then we're going to compare them to this past week's sold and completed listings on eBay, the average price that I found there. So if you haven't been watching the last few weeks of videos, basically there's been a lot of buyouts, probably stores more than individuals doing them because these are pretty extensive. And what they'll do is they'll buy up a lot of the cheaper copies of the card, and then they'll take at least one copy of the card and list it at an extremely high price, usually on TCG Player, and what that does is it throws off the medium price, so sites that track that type of thing, like MTG Goldfish, MTG Stocks, MTG Price, they are showing some inflated false numbers. And that is making people think these cards are going up in value, and they're willing then to pay more for the cards, so the people that bought up all these cards are selling them back, not at this extremely high price that they listed, but for a lower price, which is still higher than the card's probably actually worth. 
So that's what we're going to look at today and see how MTG Goldfish compares to actual sales this week on eBay. So for my eBay pricing, I'm going to take a look at cards sold over the last seven days, but they have to be sold in completed listings. I'm also throwing out any outliers. So I'm only looking at English language versions of the cards. I'm not looking at slab cards and I'm not looking at heavily played or damaged cards. Everything in the middle, I'm taking and getting you an average price. If there's not enough data on eBay, I'm going to default back to the TCG player market price, which is basically the same idea. I just don't know exactly how they get their data, but it is based on sales from their site. Now that we got that out of the way, let's start off with Goblin King from Unlimited of 42, 43 to 74, 47, according to MTG Goldfish anyway. Well, this is a card that is very desirable, maybe even for 93, 94 players sometimes, and it has been reprinted many times. It's not on the reserve list. Is this card really worth $75? Well, I couldn't find enough data this week on eBay for the unlimited version of the card, so I did have to go to TCG Player. They're saying about $35. Typically, I found their market price is a little bit lower than typically what I see on eBay. So maybe you could sell this card right now on eBay closer to $40, which isn't that far off what MTG Goldfish was saying. I mean, obviously, it's a little bit under, but we have seen much worse over the last few weeks. Deck and Black Blade from Legends of $46.16 to $60.97. Pretty big percentage movement here with this card. Now, these gold Legends tend to get hot. This one is not on the reserve list. So the Legends version isn't the only show in town, but it is kind of cool to have the original, of course. What's eBay say? $50. So actually, not far off. Only about a $10 difference. I looked a little closer at this one, and this is not inflation. Basically, what was going on, if you look at TCG prices this week, you'll find that there's a lot of heavily played versions of the card, and one near mint version, which is pushing the price up a little bit. The near mint version, they're not asking an excessively high price for, maybe just slightly higher, so that's why you're seeing a $60 average, when really the card's probably worth closer to 50 but see, those type of things are normal. You would expect that to happen in the marketplace. This was not false inflation. Ship and Dragon. Now, this is from Unlimited of $53.34 to $150. Another card that is not on the reserve list. Been reprinted many, many, many times. But it is a good 93.94 card. And it is a classic, iconic magic card. Is it really worth $150? $103.50. Okay, higher than I thought it would be. I guess I've been sleeping on Ship and Dragons from Unlimited recently. Maybe not $150, but over $100 if you look at the sold and completed listings this week on eBay. Underground Sea from Revised hits an all-time high of $60.52 to $600.43 according to MTG Goldfish. Is this for real? Is there a Revised card now worth over $600? This is a key to a land, of course, and it is on the reserve list. What's eBay tell us? $447.06. There was actually a lot of transactions. I think that's pretty common for the dual lands on eBay on any given week, actually. But I did find about 20 transactions this week. So this is a pretty good price point, a pretty good data point. Maybe not quite $600, but still, it's not that far off. Very expensive card. Sedge Troll from Unlimited, up 72 39 to 170 43 now, this is on the reserve list, although it was reprinted in Revised. It is a 93-94 card, so that could have something to do with its value at least a little bit. But mostly, we've been seeing some pretty intense market manipulation around this card over the last few weeks. So is this really at $170? $51 now. So this card was going for closer to $15 or $20 just a few weeks ago. But with all the artificial inflation... A lot of people are paying attention to this card. They're willing to spend more than they were willing to spend a few weeks ago. They're afraid it won't come back down. And that is actually creating some true growth, even if it is just temporary. And that's how these folks make their money. They're not expecting to sell this card for $170. They're expecting to sell it around $50 instead of $15. Force of Nature from Unlimited. You can see a lot of Unlimited cards being targeted again this week. Another one that is not on the reserve list, it's been reprinted, you can find cheaper copies. This one, though, up $83.20 to $98.99. Is that for real? Is this now $100? $32. Higher again than I thought it would be, but not $100. Mishra's Factory, this is the winter variant from Antiquities. This has seen a lot of market manipulation recently, up $110.40 to $767.50, according to MTG Goldfish. This is not on the reserve list, but of course, this is a unique variant of the card that a lot of people are interested in getting. On eBay, $224.50 this week. 
So this is actually a little lower than we saw on eBay last week, although there were only two copies sold this week, so you could adjust accordingly. I think we had three or four last week. Maybe this is closer to $250, but it's not $767 for sure. Drop of Honey. All right, this is a popular reserve list Arabian Nights card, actually. Up $187.49 to $899.99 this week. This is a part of Lands, Decks, and Legacy. Is this for real? $900? eBay? $903.75. We finally found one that was actually more than MTG Goldfish. We did it. And yeah, this card is the real deal. Expect to pay around $900 if you want it. Master of the Hunt. Up 20619 to 22450. This is a reserve list legends card. See some 9394 play two. Has an explosive week this week, though. Is this for real? 4439. So not really. The funny part is earlier in the week you could have picked these up for around $15 all day long. It was just the last couple days as the word of that spike started to get out there that people were willing to pay more for this card, sometimes $50-60. So again, this is a case where that artificial inflation has caused some real increase in pricing. Last one we'll look at. Good old Jazam Jen. It's been a while. Had to bring him back. Of $628.98 this week to $1,869.98. Very, very big spike. Very expensive card. Now, this is a great 93-94 card. Reserve list, Arabian Nights card. Incredibly iconic. So I would expect it to have a pretty nice price tag. But is it really creeping close to $2,000 at this point? Well, unfortunately, couldn't find any data on eBay this week. So I had to go to TCG Player. TCG Player showing $1,250. Like I said, that's a little low typically compared to what I see on eBay. So maybe if you were to sell this card on eBay, it would be closer to the $1,500 mark or so. And if you look at it that way, it's really not that far off from what we saw from MTG Goldfish. All right, let's wrap things up with our Commander Spotlight. I promised more coin flip shenanigans, so here we go. Chance Encounter, up 1113 to 1497 this week. Frenetic Afri, up 1446 to 1499. Wow, okay. I'm looking forward to see some of these coin flip decks in action once those cards come out. All right, with that being said, that is our Market Watch for this week. Next week, I'm expecting a big standard week. Pro Tour will be in full swing. And over the course of the next probably 14 to 20 days, some of these standard cards are going to spike aggressively. They will come back down when the hype subsides, of course, but I'm looking forward to see what happens to the Pro Tour and which cards are going to be on the move in the coming weeks. So check back with us Saturday to find out what's going on. We'll also do post-Pro Tour recaps and such the following week. But until next time, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe. Have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.